Hi everyone, welcome to my Monday and it's back into work mode and I've been actually editing videos already this morning plus I've just finished recording a video for you over here. You're getting a little bit of a sneak peek into the products there but it's been a very good recording morning because the video went extremely well. When I'm recording now, because I suppose because I've been recording for so long, it doesn't take me too many takes and by that I, I mean I don't make too many mistakes and I think that just comes with the experience of having been producing content for almost eight or nine years now. Uh, in the early days, I can remember that I would make a video and every other word would be er uh, or um, or I would hesitate in some way. And sometimes I would leave those in the videos and I don't like watching back some of the old videos because they make me cringe a little bit. But later on, perhaps three to four months in to doing videos, I found that I really wanted to perfect my presenting style. And even though the errs and the ums were still there, I used to edit them out and do jump cuts. And then as time progressed, I found that I would perhaps pause a little bit more or have some interconnecting words I would use rather than the errs and the ums. So it sort of got a lot easier with time. And I get asked this a lot actually, on Twitter and the comment section on YouTube, a lot of people ask me, you know, how do you get good at presenting? Do you need to do certain things? Do you script your videos, etc., etc.? And I used to script, but I found that that made me sound so robotic. And then I moved on to just making sort of a, a bullet point list, and that would jog my memory as to certain things I wanted to cover with, within a video. But I certainly don't do that with all my videos now. If I'm doing an in-depth review, then I would still have those sort of memory joggers written down so that I would make sure I didn't miss something within the video. But more often than not, because I've used maybe a product for two or three weeks, I know what I want to tell you anyway, and I tell it in a more natural manner. So that's how I do it nowadays. And with regards to how you get good at it, the main sort of advice I give people, uh, including if you're wanting to know, is that just sort of practice you can't get good at something unless you actually practice. And I even went through a stage in the first sort of three to six months where I would practice in front of a mirror, not even in front of a camera. So anyway, the rest of my day, I've got some more organizing to do with the editing room. And I also got a delivery, and this is a little product that I'm gonna be using in some of my videos in the future. This is a Blackmagic Design Ultra Studio Mini Recorder. Now, what I'm gonna be using this for is you connect this via Thunderbolt to your computer, be that a MacBook Pro or I can connect it to my Mac Pro. And then I've got an SDI input and an HDMI input. And I can actually input the uh, video from my Panasonic GH4 camera. And I can either record that straight to hard disk or solid state drive. Or in fact, I can link this up to something like Wirecast and broadcast live on YouTube using my Panasonic GH4. So I'm gonna be testing that out in the future and I'll let you know when I'm using it so you can see how it performs. So it's now Monday evening here in the UK and Apple's Worldwide Developers Conference 2014 keynote is just about to start. You can see it queued up on the television screen behind me here. I'm gonna sit back and relax and enjoy the event. Now normally I would record my videos with my reaction and opinion to what's been announced tomorrow and then you would see that on Wednesday but instead of doing that I'm going to record my reaction to each announcement as it happens so you'll actually be seeing this perhaps within 24 hours of the event actually happening. Now for copyright reasons I can't actually rebroadcast any of the events so it's just going to be my opinions but I hope that you enjoy it. <laughs> Apple really do make me laugh. Mac OS X weed, and then they settled on Mac OS X Yosemite. Not even sure if I'm pronouncing that right. But here we go, they're now moving on to discussing the new features of Mac OS X Yosemite. They've just revealed the look of the new OS for desktop, and some of my worst fears really, it's a lot more simplistic. The icons are unfortunately a little bit candy colored, if you remember back to when they released iOS 7, a lot of people didn't like how that looked, and this is not looking fantastic. I mean, it's early days, I haven't tested it. I like the way they've done transparency though, so when you look at the sidebar in your windows and drop down menus, you can see your desktop wallpaper behind. 
I like that, just not too keen at first glance on these new icons. So Apple are now just demonstrating the new applications in the new version of the OS. And they've just taken a look at the new calendar app. And one of the nice things that I really do like, a very positive move, is a new day view where it gives you your appointments sort of on the left and then previews of what that content is relating to on the right hand panel. So I think that's a really nice move. So now we've got details of a new service called iCloud Drive. Now, as well as being able to synchronize the usual documents you would associate with those, like the iWork applications, you can add your own folders and use it much like you would something like Dropbox. So that sounds really interesting. No details on pricing at the moment, because obviously if you're storing lots of files in iCloud, you're gonna use a lot of data capacity. But it's something that has made me think, you know, I use Dropbox a lot at the moment and I rely on it for moving files around. So maybe if Apple get this right, it will offer me something new to maybe switch across from Dropbox and use iCloud Drive instead. So that's really good. And now Apple are detailing the new version of Mail. And one of the key points, and I'm gonna hold them to this, one of the key points they said about is that they're gonna concentrate on the simple things and they actually said reliable syncing. Now for a long time now in Mac OS X Mavericks, I've had so much problems with synchronizing Gmail. You find things don't show up, messages don't show up. You go into your drafts folder, your drafts don't show up. You go back to the main inbox and lots of messages have disappeared. I really hope that Apple have got it right this time. Oh my goodness, that is absolutely amazing what's just been announced. Now, if you envisage using the Messages application or iMessage on your Mac at the moment, when you are talking with somebody using iMessage on your iPhone, and then you open up maybe your MacBook Air or your MacBook Pro, you can continue that conversation within the Messages application. Well, if you've received a text message, so not an iMessage, but you've received a text from somebody, that had to remain on your smartphone or on your iPhone. Well, now, you can actually continue SMS message conversations within the Messages app on your Mac as well. And not only that, but you can also accept phone calls on the Mac OS desktop. Wow, that is absolutely amazing. So Apple have now just moved on to discussing iOS 8. And at the moment, they're just talking about how you can respond to notifications. It seems like a good sort of move, the fact that you can quickly deal with notifications from the notification bar that comes down on the top of your screen, or in fact from your lock screen, you can deal with notifications there as well of actually going into the application. So that's really good, I like that. That means that you'll be able to get things done a little bit quicker. And I also like what they've done with mail. They've done some new gestures where you can swipe in certain directions to either mark a message as unread, or to delete a message, you can swipe it right off of the sort of left-hand panel of the mail app, or you can just swipe a little way in and flag the message, for example. So that's really nice. At the moment, the other things that they're actually detailing in iOS 8 aren't that great. They're a little bit underwhelming for me at the moment, but I'm gonna watch a little bit more and just see whether something really catches my attention. So we are now midway through the presentation of iOS 8. And so far, it's still not made me that excited. There are a couple of features though that I really like. One of them is family sharing. So whereas people at the moment might have the same sign-in to their app purchases and share that with their children so that the children don't have to duplicate that same purchase, now you can have separate Apple ID sign-ins but actually share applications and purchases and rentals between other family members as long as they're using the same credit card information, so there's still that requirement. But when one of your children, for example, make a purchase on their device using your credit or debit card, you are notified on your device asking for permission for that purchase to be sort of granted. So that's really nice, I like that. And then they've also detailed a new photo app where when you take photos on your iPhone, they are stored in the new iCloud Drive as opposed to using PhotoStream from what I've sort of made from it. Now I thought that PhotoStream enabled 
you to access photos that you've taken on your iPhone on your other Apple devices. So this new photo app is sort of duplicating that functionality, but actually storing the photos you take on the iCloud drive instead. So it's, it's quite good, but I, I need to obviously get it in my hands and, and sort of try it as well to really understand how it differs from PhotoStream. So Apple have continued to detail new features in iOS 8. One of them was this predictive text within the keyboard. And I was sort of a little bit disappointed because I was hoping that they would give us a brand new keyboard experience. But in fact, what they've done is they've then moved on to the developer section of the keynote presentation and detailed that you can install your own keyboards. So you can install perhaps a swipe keyboard and grant that full access to your device. So really, really cool. And then they've also got a new API which allows developers to use Touch ID within their applications as well. Brilliant, brilliant news. So they're certainly moving in the right direction with this. So the keynote presentation has just finished and there was no hardware announcements, no sort of pre-announcements of new hardware coming. I for one knew that this was gonna be about the software, but I did have that hope there that I mentioned in previous videos about a Retina MacBook Air. But maybe that will just come out with another event very shortly. I know Apple haven't released any hardware for quite a while now, and people were expecting it in this event. But what you must remember is this was the Worldwide Developers Conference. So it's all about the software. And if you'd have gone to the Apple Store online whilst the event was going on, if there was going to be a hardware announcement, they would have taken the store down for maintenance. And of course that didn't happen. So we really knew quite early on that there wasn't going to be any hardware announced at WWDC. So we'll have to keep an eye out over the next sort of few weeks or few months for new announcements. A lot of people are going to be moaning and disappointed. I'm already looking at my Twitter stream down here on my MacBook Pro and people are saying, no, there hasn't been any new hardware, no one more thing, no iWatch. Well, that will come with time. Be patient, people. It will happen. It will definitely happen at some stage during 2014, at least for some hardware announcements. And then who knows how long we'll have to wait for the iWatch, even if Apple are working on one. I'm sure they are, but it's all been rumours, as we know. So that's it for my sort of evening of Apple entertainment. I'm going to watch some regular television now. Let me know what you thought of the Apple announcements in the comments section below. Don't forget to hit that like button, and I'll see you all again tomorrow. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you'd like to watch another amazing video from me, please do click that top box. And if you want to subscribe to my geeky channel, click the red box on the bottom of your screen now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.